Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Inga Cotton. I'm the founder and executive director of San Antonio Charter Moms. And uh, I'm so grateful that we have a guest who's also kind of part of the San Antonio Charter Moms team, has been for several years. But uh, Amy is the founder of Maker Mama. And uh, by creating her own blog and um, doing her own like DIY blog posts, like she built this amazing business. And she also works as a consultant on like helping us make our website better and social media and search engine optimization and all this, all this expertise. But um, Amy's latest project is that she's been going on road trips with her family and she's working on a book about it. And we have, there's some um, cool like downloadables and stuff. So um so I wanted to have Amy come on to Charter Moms Chats. And oh, and there's a guest post on the blog today. And uh, so you'll see a link to the blog post in the description of the video. So I really encourage you to um, read the blog post and, and check out the resources that she's got. So, um, but yeah, Amy, so you have advice for us about taking, uh, planning a road trip with your family. And, um, but so I was wondering, oh, actually, before we get into that, can you talk about like, um, like how you created Maker Mama and and then sort of how that led you to like creating a business and then kind of becoming part of the SA Charter Moms team? Sure, yeah. Okay, so I started uh, what is now Maker Mama back in 2009. So it's been 11 years this year, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, blogging looked a lot different then than it does now. Um, uh yeah, I started as a creative hobby when I became a stay-at-home mom after I left my job as a program director at a local literary arts nonprofit, Gemini Inc. Some of your listeners have probably heard of that. Um, yeah, so I became a stay-at-home mom. I've always been a creative and kind of uh, loved making things, and um, I needed a hobby and an outlet. So, and I had while I was working there, I discovered the world of blogs, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, what is this thing I've never heard of before?" Um, which just seems like bizarre to think that you know somebody could not have heard of it today, but. Um, so I decided to start mine, and it actually had a different name. Um, it was called Three in a Row um, way back then because I only had three kids. <laughs> and then I had one more, and uh, I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't um, you know, put a number <laughs> in the title of, of this website that I've created. Um, that's a lot about my family. Um, so I came up with Maker Mama, and it's been that ever since. Um, but yeah, I started off just kind of a lot of uh, musings on the things I was finding online because back then like Instagram wasn't a thing Pinterest wasn't a thing um, Twitter was just sort of an early thing and uh, and Facebook was around but I think it was still it, you know not nearly what it was today so um, as I was writing content on the website um, and meeting other people online doing similar things. Um, I started venturing into doing my own like DIY tutorials. Um, I think my very first one was like paper plate angel wings here in San Antonio. There's Las Posadas around the holidays and my kids would always need like a costume. And one year it was angel wings for, for theirs. And I was like, how can I make angel wings? I was a young mom on a budget and um, paper plates were the things. I turned it into a tutorial on my website. And uh, the success of that, um, I think I got a lot of traffic from like Italy. They have a big uh, festival every year where people dress up and um, the, the angel wings were a hit. <laughs> so it was kind of, it was just fun to like see how I could create these things and put them online and like get a response from people. And um, as I continue to do more of that, um, I uh, learned the ropes of, of Instagram and Pinterest and social media as it all came out. And I started doing um, some contract projects with different websites um, or different brands would come on and do some sponsored content. Um, so I started making some freelance income and, uh, but all mostly about creative DIY projects. So that was like what the, where the name Maker Mama came from and where like the bulk of my content online was originally. And um, I went through a divorce about five years ago and transitioning from that, um, uh, I, you know, I wasn't working full time, I was working, you know, had some income from the website coming in, but needed to find sustainable ways to support myself. Um, while still also nourishing my creative spirit. So freelancing work worked for a time. And uh, I worked um, briefly added a web 
web development agency. And there I really started to learn the ropes of working with clients on social media. And um, I left there and put my shingle out, as they say. <laughs> and uh, so I had this body of work that I'd already done, which was part of what helped me get hired at this web development agency. Um, and I just started, you know, reaching out to my local community and people like you, Inga, who I knew already and who were familiar. You were blogging as well. You, you're a longtime blogger. So we kind of grew up as kind of some of the OG baby bloggers here in San Antonio. I guess maybe we're like grandma bloggers now. I don't know. Um, but so I started saying, hey, I'm available. I am ready to take on clients. What kind of help do you need? And um, people started coming and learning the, the ropes of managing my own clients from there. And uh, I always said that, uh, uh, Inga, you came on pretty early when, when I did that. And I was like, you know, we've built such a good relationship and a good rapport and just processes with the things that we do to help optimize San Antonio Charter Moms. Um, I always said, you know, it'd be great just to have like you as my main client and then continue on with Maker Mama. And I also have another business now, Dog Friendly San Antonio. So I've been able to continue working with you to help optimize and, and share the things that I'm learning um, while still running my own businesses as well. So that's kind of the origin stories and where I've gotten to where I am today. And um, my content online for Maker Mama now, um, uh, my favorite uh, social media channel is Instagram. Um, so I love posting uh, photos and, and just talking about my life. So it's shifted a little more towards like creative living rather than lots of DIY tutorials. Um, and uh, I still share some of the previous DIY tutorials on there, or I share more of the things that I'm making for fun rather than here is a post I'm creating to tell you how to do it all. Um, so I really am about creative family and living. So uh, a big part of that for me is road tripping now. Um, yeah, so I take lots of trips on my kids. I've always really enjoyed going and doing things locally out and about in the community and uh, kind of expanding that reach and going out and about beyond our city and beyond our state to explore different things out there to do with my kids. So yeah. Oh, what was some of your for, uh, earlier? Well, I, I, yeah, you, I mean, period, before the pandemic, like period, mm -hmm. like, making like longer road trips and you know planning like you know going across multiple states. Like, what were some yeah. of the, like big road trips that that you mm -hmm. took with your kids? So um, when I when I was married, when my kids were younger, we would take uh, family trips out of state. Uh, to Oklahoma to visit family. Um, so that was a little bit different, but it was still like a nine hour drive. So it took some planning, but we were going to stay with family. So not quite having to figure out all the nuts and bolts of what to do while we were there. Um, but uh, as a single mom now, um, uh, I've done day trips here and there or small weekend trips, but my first big like road trip all by myself with my four kids out of state was to Colorado uh, back in 2017 actually, I believe. Um, so three years ago, and um, uh, I think it was shortly after I had left my job, I was like, I have the summer. I can go take a big trip with my kids, but I can't afford something super huge and fancy or I can't, you know, fly them. So um, just I'd never been to Colorado. I had always heard lots of great things about it. I was like, you know what, let's do that and just started uh, figuring out all the pieces of how to plan that. Um, and uh, I was a bit ambitious. It was like an eight day trip. And um, um, I added camping on top of that too. So <laughs> I had never driven out of state uh, that far with my kids by myself. And I'd never uh, been in charge of such a big camping trip by myself either. So uh, lots of in adventures ensued on that trip um, and was definitely exhausted coming back, but I wouldn't have changed it at all. And it, it's been, uh, the catalyst for other bigger and smaller trips as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember when you posted a bunch of pictures after coming back from that trip and I was, I was super excited about just, I, I just, I was I, like vicariously, I just felt really proud that um, you. <laughs> you know, all the, all the moving parts and all the logistics and, yes. you know, make it work and, and, you know, having good, you know, good memories and yeah. You know, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm glad that it's grown into you know, an area of interest and, and something that, that you can, you know, through, use your creative energy to share um, yeah. with other families. So, yeah, so I'm really thankful that, um, you know, you wrote this guest post for 
at the SHR Models blog. And like I said, the link to that blog post is in the description of the video. And I hope everyone who's watching the video clicks through and, and reads the blog post. But um, I was hoping like on the video, you could talk about like those those five points that you share of like to help uh, families with um, you know planning planning a road trip and making it successful um, on a budget. So should we, should we dive in? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So the first uh, tip I gave was to pick places with history. So we're talking in this blog post. I'm talking about how to make it educational and fun. Um, I think parents always, you know, want to, you know, be all mom and dad up in there and like make sure our kids are learning something while we're <laughs> going on trips um, or going to museums. And um, so picking places with history is a great way to make it interesting um, and educational for your kids. So what this looks like, it could be a museum if you wanted to. Um, sometimes we go to museums. I am big on getting outdoors with my kids. So there are a lot of outdoor places that you can go to even locally with a lot of history. So those are often like state or national parks. Um, one of our favorites um, was Carlsbad Caverns. So there's not necessarily, I guess there's the history of how, you know, they discovered it and how um, uh, they developed it and how it became a national park. But I think for me as a parent um, and just as a avid road tripper, like I think natural places when you're traveling to someplace you've never been, yeah, you can go see the touristy stuff. But I think finding the places that make it its own place, make it really interesting. And especially when it's like natural wonders like Carlsbad Caverns, um, I think it just it gives me a sense of wonder and I think like it really makes an impression on my kids too. So finding a place with history like that um, can really make it fun, but also, you know, they're picking up tidbits and, and their worldview is expanding as well. So yeah, that was my first tip there. And it's, it's cheaper than buying stuff at yes. you know, amusement parks and like, yeah. because it feels like you kind of get nickel and dimed. Yes. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. So that was a big thing too, like saving money on this trip, like going outdoors um, and buying a national park pass, like can save you wonders. I think it's maybe $80 for the year and you can get into all the national parks for free. Um, I, I might be off on that amount, but I, it really was very affordable. And, and when you're going someplace like Colorado, um, even here in Texas, there are not a lot more national parks than you might think. Um, there's a lot of designations. Uh, there's like monuments and areas. It's not just parks per se, but there's lots of different categories for that. Um, and then a state park pass too um, is very affordable and like waives that entry fee um, whenever you go to visit a state park as well. So, yep, all about the affordable uh, <laughs> trip <laughs> with my kids was for that. That adds up. Yeah. 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 So another tip you had was um, getting kids involved with the planning, but yes. you have to be careful not to make it too open ended, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. If you want it, if you left it open ended, your kids would be like, oh, we're going to go eat at McDonald's every day and we're going to go to the candy store and go see all those really expensive touristy things. And, um, you know, depending on your budget and and your timeline and, you know, the, the priorities you have while you're on this trip, you can give your kids like um, kind of pre-selected choices, right? I think this is a kind of a parenting skill in general, starting off from when they're toddlers, you know, do you want the red bowl or the blue bowl? Or, you know, do you want the carrots or the peas? You know, giving them choices you're okay with them having. Um, so, uh, it, but it helps give them a sense of autonomy and like, I'm a part of this trip. It can help them get excited about going on the trip. Um, I know I still get, you know, across four kids, you know, right now they're 10 to 17 years old and that age has shifted, you know, over the years, but, you know, chances are somebody's going to groan or complain about wanting to go do something, even if it's here in town and, um, but giving them some choices that, you know, helps give them a sense of autonomy and ownership over planning this trip. So it could be anything from planning where you're going to where you're eating or what you want to bring to eat or um, what you want to listen to in the car or what have you. So giving, giving them choices in areas that you're comfortable with, giving them choices to help be a part of that makes it like a family trip and not just you dictating to your kids what you're going to do the whole time. 
<laughs> Although I probably did that a lot more on our first trip because it was so out of my comfort zone that I needed to have some like <laughs> security in knowing what we were doing. And so yeah, like there's if I'm lost, the audiobooks get paused. Oh yes. I can't, yeah, I can't like I just can't multitask. Like yeah. but if we're on a long stretch of highway, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll, oh, I'm I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but no, you know, yeah. yeah there's, totally. there's a there's a rule. Yeah. So one thing that my my daughter is super excited about, I let her pick out like an organizer. I don't know, like it sits kind of by her feet, but it has like a place to like, so oh. her water bottle doesn't fall over. Mm -hmm. And then just put like a book and some snacks. And like, she's just thrilled about having yeah. like little organizer. Yeah, like a little caddy. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the car yeah. can definitely get messy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, so I, I, I admit I was jumping ahead a little bit, but oh, um, okay. for, for like long drives, like you have some advice about um, audiobooks and podcasts. Yes. Well, even for shorter drives, um, when we went to Lost Maples the other weekend, um, we we put on some podcasts. So I'm a big fan of audiobooks and podcasts. Um, and I think it started with... Um, road trips. I think when we used to take that like nine hour drive to Oklahoma and our kids were so little, um, uh, I discovered uh, that not all audiobooks are created equal. Um, on Audible, when you you know have a membership to that, you can get an audiobook that's 45 minutes long for one credit, or you can get an audiobook that's 25 hours long for one credit. So I opted for the longer ones that I can get. The box sets. Yes, right? Yeah. yeah. So like the Ramona Quimby series, I think was our first like big family intro into audiobook listing and my kids loved it and I loved it um, and then they listen to it all the time at home now too um, so that's been a great like yes it's still technically on a screen but you're not looking and interacting with a screen while you're listening to it so getting audiobooks I opt for ones that I also want to listen to so that I'm not sitting there driving like oh um, and then again that's you know something that you can give your kids a choice about too like hey I'm looking at these three audiobooks which guys do you guys want to get together um the library you can also uh, download and borrow and check out audiobooks um and then podcasts there are a lot of great podcasts out there these are really great for you know shorter day trips or trips out of town um or in the area um i'm a big lover of all of guy Roz's podcast basically <laughs> i joke to my kids that he's my internet boyfriend because i love all of his work so much um but he was originally the host of the ted radio hour um and which he's moved on from hosting that now but he also um produces how i built this where he interviews um different business owners and entrepreneurs from brands that we've all heard of or most of us are, have heard of and um it's always really for me as an entrepreneur and business owner it's always really interesting and inspiring to hear those stories of where people came from and and he's really good at creating a story around it kind of um if you listen to interviews about how he does his interviews he really like kind of dives in to find kind of their hero's journey and their own experience, which makes it really interesting. Um, but my kids and I listen to that together and I think it kind of helps like, yes, it's one thing for them to see their mom, like, you know, doing her thing and kind of having some obscure idea about these internet businesses that she runs. I think it's another thing to hear like the stories from other people, of what they do and just, I think it really inspires um, creative thinking and problem solving and um, just expansive like, you know, ideas in our kids' minds. And um, so we all listen to that in the car. Um, Guy Ross also has a great kids podcast called Wow in the World. It's like a science focused podcast and it's super quirky and fun. And um, so that's really great for younger kids. Um, we do still listen to that, not quite as much anymore since my kids are getting older, but there's tons of podcasts. And once you start listening to one, you find out about others. And um, yeah, that's just a big like love and passion of mine. And, and we listen to them all at home too now. So oftentimes my kids are going to sleep listening to podcasts or audiobooks now. So yeah. Yeah, that's a great habit. Yeah, it's a great way to like fill up that time when you're on the road for like six hours a day or whatever um, to just kind of, you know, help distract everybody in the car from whatever minor discomforts there might be from sitting so long. But yeah. 
Yeah. And you feel like you use that time well, like not just yes. from one place to another, but like hearing yeah. stories yeah. and building up knowledge yeah. and getting inspiration. Yes. Yes, definitely. That's a big part of it. So um, yeah, I think it's really helped my kids come to learn to really look forward to um, going on these times together. And they become shared stories like, oh, remember, you know, that story we heard or that idea we heard. And yeah, they're great conversation starters too. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, I love, I'm, I haven't, I've, we've been listening to um, Wow in the World, especially like when we used to drive up to Cibolo for code ninjas, because it's kind of a longer drive, but mm -hmm. um, we got in the habit, it was just the right length um, yeah. to, and then, but the, um, you know, my kids are, are getting bigger too. And the, the one about entrepreneurship sounds really interesting. So I think, yes. like, yeah. Have I you think not I listened to too. how I built this? No, oh I was, God. I'm aware of it, but I haven't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're welcome. That is my Christmas gift to you. <laughs> he actually has a book now. Yeah. Ooh. So um, I added a link to to your guest post to there was mm -hmm. over the summer. Um, Carly Friedman wrote a, a book. Uh, she wrote a guest post about audiobooks, and mm -hmm. she explains like step by step how to get the free ones from the library. Yes. And she yeah. is, she's a master. Ooh, I need to go that. back and look that. I've always been like, oh, my Audible membership. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's a ninja at jumping on like new audiobooks. So that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So the next, your next tip is um, about maps, about who needs to read maps, like yes. map and trail maps. Yeah. And yeah. Yes. Which you have one behind you. <laughs> you have <laughs> yeah. Texas. So I think this kind of happened on accident. Um, I am a big thrift store lover and I found this like uh, old, like vintage set of like national geographic state maps or like state area maps at our regional maps. Um, that, you know, the ones that we all grew up with, you know, the big fold out maps. And um, this one has like some illustrations. I think it might have some facts about the states on the back. Um, but uh, we started taking that on our road trips with us. Like when we would go to New Mexico, we went to New Mexico last summer or in 2019. And um, uh, when we went to Colorado, we brought those along. So, and my kids just like, oh yeah, let me follow along on the road and like find all the towns. And it was just like an interesting way for them to help. I know that I have one kid who really likes to see the GPS as we're going, like to know, well, A, like how much time we have left on the road, but also to visually see where we are. And uh, this is a different experience of it, but I think it helps given like a more conceptual, like picture of where we're at and what are the places we're visiting and how far we've gone. Um, and then trail maps are really great. Um, a, for not getting lost when you're out on a trail someplace you've never been. But um, uh, and it, we, we, my kids really um, got engaged in using, or my youngest daughter did, I think a couple of my kids did on our last trip to Lost Maples. Um, we got there, we had just like a two hour window of time before we knew we needed to head back. So asked um, one of the park rangers, hey, which trails are a good option for us with this amount of time. And he gave us two. So we all sat down and like looked at the map and we're like, okay, this would take us over here to see these things. This would take us over here. It's a little steeper to go walk on. Um, uh, they're about the same length. Um, but it, I don't know. And we, you know, we were able to, that's a part of the decision-making they were involved in like, okay, we're going to go in the steeper one because he's seen some of the other stuff. Um, and uh but then my youngest daughter wanted to hold the map so she could kind of try to track where we are um, on the trail at the time. And um, that was a little easier to like stop and look with her. Like she thought she, we were here and it's like, oh, actually I think we're a little bit over here. You know, look at these landmarks. And I don't know, it was just like a little like learning experience together, which, you know, it's not didactic, like let's sit down and have a lesson, but it's more of like an experiential um, and just open that interest and in. that's a life skill that you don't necessarily think, oh, I need to learn how to read maps because there's GPS now, especially <laughs> but back in the day, we all needed to know how to read them to find where we were going. So yeah, that's been a fun way to, to connect with them and help them get a sense of where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. And maps are beautiful. Like, like, especially mm -hmm. like Texas state parks, like they, wow, they have like, you know, pictures of animals and, and just mm -hmm. very, coded and i mean we actually have like a um uh, i'll send you a picture later but like one of our walls like i just have like maps we've picked up at state parks kind of stuck on yes. the wall it was yeah. like 
random map wall, but it's very, it's very inspiring. That's awesome. like, I also, yeah, yeah, I really like to collect those as a souvenir when we go on big road trips too. Like here are all the places that we went and it's fun to look back and like, oh, remember, you know, all those things. Um, you can also, I think, send off, especially for like state visitors bureaus, you can oh, yeah. mail off or, or ask to be sent like a pack and they'll send you a bunch of like a bunch of those pamphlets with maps. Jeez, that's where this map came from. <laughs> this is from the, um, yeah, like Texas travel guide and nice. you get, like, a booklet and you get the map with it. And yeah. Free, and uh, yeah, and we, we started, there's, if you, you can't see it, um, on the camera, but like there's yeah. like little mini pom poms that we've stuck on. Oh yeah. We visited. And before the pandemic, we were adding more pom poms, and then it kind of stopped for a little bit. <laughs> and then, but it's the map's still on the wall. When the pandemic yeah. over, we will <laughs> go yeah. more places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a definitely a fun way. I also like to collect. Um, you've probably maybe you've seen these at like visitor centers, particularly at state and national parks. They have bandanas where they'll print the map of the park mm. on it. And uh, nice. I've been building a slow collection of those as a fun little place specific souvenir. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. We're no, geeking out that. on maps over here. Yep. <laughs> we are. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Okay. Um, and then, okay. So your uh, five out of five here, the tip is about uh, screen free games. Yes. Yeah. Playing games in the car. In the car. Yeah. Um, I think we probably all kind of grew up with a, you know, look for, uh, you know, either license plates for the letters of the alphabet on license plates or billboards um, and a classic kind of car ride game to pass on to our children. Um, and, uh, and there's ways to add, you know, as your kids get older, add like competition in it or um, one game that we started playing recently. We actually play this also sometimes while we're on trails hiking to kill some of the time, but uh, playing we're going on a road trip and I'm packing um, and the first person starts with the letter A. So Inga, if it was your turn, you would say, I'm going on a road trip and I'm packing an apple. Um, sometimes kids get crazy and like, oh, an aardvark or <laughs> I don't know, something other weird name that's hard to remember. And then I would go, I'm going on a road trip and I'm packing the apple that you just said, and I would add, and some bananas. And um, and the next, it would continue going on. You'd have to repeat all the objects before it um, and add on your object and, and try not to forget anything. So um, <laughs> that's a fun, like, kind of one that you can all do in the car together as a family or your kids if you're focusing. Um, and there's lots of other little just uh, ideas that don't require any equipment, like those kind of word or you know hide and seek kind of games. Um, there's also lots of little things that you can pack um, to give your kids supplies to play games and entertain themselves in the car as well. So I one tradition I have when we're going on big road trips is I pack my kids like a little goodie bag and it might have like a pack of cards or um, a little snack or some, stickers or like a notepad and pens or crayons and just like a little kit of things to keep them uh, occupied and entertained in the car. And, and that's one thing that they always get excited about. Oh, what did mom put in the goodie bag now? Um, even my older ones, like I have teenagers <laughs> and they, you know, it gets a little more challenging figuring out what they might be interested in. But, and of course I like to add in a book in there as well. So there's lots of games and activities that you can do that don't require screens in the car. Um, uh, I think that's often like a go-to, like, oh, that just makes it easier. Like, I just want to get through the six hour drive like, and survive. But um, uh, I haven't always been in the place to like have devices for each of my kids. But even if I did like charging them and like, oh my gosh, like, that can, you know, you think it's going to solve everything, but it's not necessarily. Sometimes it <laughs> creates more problems than solving them. Um, so I I grew up going on trips uh, with my parents and um, more day trips and like big long road trips. But I just remember staring at the window a lot and like, you know, just letting those, uh, those creative wheels turn and boredom really... Um, is I think the secret ingredient to a lot of creative thought. So yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, you know, right? There's there's an educational element to letting your kids be bored and then seeing yes. what they come up with. Right? Exactly, and they will come up with some pretty amazing things sometimes if we just give them the opportunity to get bored. Um, yeah, it's not our responsibility to keep them entertained at all times. Yes, I will provide them with some tools to help them uh, get inspired or or you know keep busy um, because. Yeah, going on road trips, especially out of state, does require a long length of time. Um, but yeah, I think giving our it's and it's about coping mechanisms, being able to cope with like feeling uncomfortable. Um, I like to liken it sometimes to meditation. Um, if you're sitting and meditating and get a scratch on your nose, you know you can kind of break out of the the zen moment that you're in and scratch your nose or you can learn to sit with it and eventually it passes and um kind of the same thing with sitting in a car <laughs> um it's you know all these things our kids are all are sponges and they're soaking up things all the time and um i think uh going on a road trip and experiencing something new together provides uh even more um like, you know, it, it heightens all the senses and ways and gives them um, even more to soak up than they would in, in your everyday life. So I know that's for me and, you know, for my kids. So, yeah. Yeah. They're able to see places that are unique and really different from what we see in our own city and yes, broaden yeah. their sense of what's out there in the world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We have gone on um, a couple like smaller. We did go on one bigger road trip this year. Um, so it's, it looks a lot different navigating it through the pandemic and, you know, following CDC guidelines and uh, local ordinances and um, and your comfort level. And so it might look like right now taking a trip might look like taking your trip to the river here in town and walking outside. And um, I dipped my toes wet uh, back in the spring and we did a day trip to the beach, but I've focused, I already focus a lot on going and doing outdoor things with my kids here and on road trips. Um, but I think even more so right now, if you're considering one, the great outdoors is still there. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's a theme we keep coming back to on the blog, you know, whether it's like greenway trails or just, you know, activities like, like um, you know, teaching kids to like look for birds and notice mm -hmm. things about birds, maybe that they they hadn't stopped. And it, and it is kind of fi like finding finding that stillness, you know, and being okay yeah. with, um, yeah, things being a little a little quieter and, and not as busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, those are, those are great tips. I want to make sure that, um, people know about how to get access to the resources. So there's yeah. um, like the blog post includes uh, links to some things that you've created. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering if you could uh, tell us more about those. Yeah. So I have my pocket road trip planning guide. That's an ebook. Uh, I think I just launched it last month. It's relatively new, um, but it's a digital ebook with kind of just like your starter uh, guide on how to plan a road trip. So um, with or without kids. Um, so everything from, you know, picking out where you want to go and making reservations at hotels or campsites um, and making it budget friendly, planning out your meals and um, planning your excursions um, and all the like moving pieces around doing that. So it's kind of a quick start how to guide. Um, you can get that on my website over at makermama.com um, and just a lot of tips and tricks on, on planning a road trip or uh, for in the far future or the near future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, um, so like one of the tips you talked about today was about um, screen free ways to keep kids busy and you have a resource for that too, right? Yes. I have a free, this is like a little free mini ebook, um, 52 screen free road trip activities for kids. Um, you know, and, and doing the writing that I do about road tripping. Um, uh, that's one thing that I hear a lot from, from parents in particular, like, you know, I want to go on a road trip, but the idea of like going so far in the car with my kids just seems like, oh my gosh, I'd go insane. And sometimes you do, <laughs> but <laughs> having a plan for like, okay, guys, here are 52 different things you could do that don't require screens um, that can keep your kids entertained and occupied in the car um, that you can feel good about and plan for. So that's a free, just like, um, 
listicle ebook um, with different ideas for kids of all ages. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, the, the way that folks can download the stuff, they can go to makerbamba.com. Yes. But then also we have links yeah. to it in the guest post that you yep. wrote. So they yes. can, they can yeah. find the links there too. Yeah. 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 They're all right there. I think I have some other printables listed in there. Like I have a license plate um, printable game uh, where you can find license plates from different states and check them off. There's like a list version and there's a map version too. So the kids can see where where that state is on the map as well. So yes, but there's lots of fun stuff around road tripping on my website. Yeah. <laughs> And you can, well, yeah, again, you can find all the links on the guest post with all the five tips we talked about here today. Yeah. You know, and, and like you said, I mean, this is, I feel like this is very on brand for SA Turner Moms because all this stuff is educational. So it's, mm -hmm. it's fun, you know, but it's, you know, they're learning stuff along the way, but it's not like, you know, sitting at a desk, like classroom learning, it's more like learning through experiences and mm -hmm. by getting to see cool stuff. Yeah. One thing that just came to mind, um, I've heard of people taking like virtual road trips right now with a pandemic um, by planning someplace they wanted to go and going there on Google Maps on like the Street View versions. Um, I think I even, uh, I might have heard about that on an audiobook. <laughs> NPR has like a road trip collection, like audiobook on, on Audible that was one thing that we've listened to in the car. But so if you can't, if you're not going on the road right now, you can definitely kind of uh, go there online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I admit I've there. I've bought a few like travel guide books for myself as a way mm -hmm. to sort of daydream about like places that are farther away that we'd like to go. Um, you mm -hmm. know, when we feel safe getting on a plane again. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, in the short run, it's it's the the state parks pass. Yeah, is, is what's getting the most use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in ordinary time, um, you know, outside of pandemic life, it's always fun to have something to look forward to. Um, you know, whether it's during summer break or spring break um, or the weekend, like it's fun to have something to like plan and look forward to to kind of get us through like the everyday tasks and chores of life. Um, mm -hmm. And even more so when you look forward to to it together as a family. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's something where like like talking about and planning the the day trips. It's um yeah, it gives us something to talk about. It's not just like oh same you know same old same old. We're home. <laughs> we're doing distance learning. We're working from home. You know, but it's yeah. like and I think sometimes we almost put like yeah, I think we we definitely put more energy into the road trip or the day trip mm -hmm. planning than we really need to. But but it, it's fun. It makes yeah, it's yeah. It a goal. It adds variety, and it feels like we're still learning and growing, even though. Yeah the pandemic has kind of limited some of our choices. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And the outdoors are great. Um, yeah. I think, I don't know if you, Inga, if you did much like day tripping or road tripping with your family, but I know I did when I was little and sometimes you forget about it, like, because it was just a part of what you did. But uh, I think that's, that's definitely like, I have those memories that were like a big part of my childhood going to see places outdoors. I lived in England as a girl on the countryside. So we would drive all over and see all these amazing things. And um, yeah, that really planted a seed. And I know that'll plant a seed in my own kids too. So yeah. yeah. When, I, when I was growing up, we, we, well, I was born in California, but we also lived on the East coast and then moved back to California and then eventually moved to Texas. But mm -hmm. so we did a couple of cross country drives as part of moving. Yeah. You don't really necessarily stop and see the sites as much. We did yeah. a, like, I remember stopping at Grand Canyon and like, yeah, that really made an impression. That, That's that awesome. That's unique. Yeah. And um, yeah. And, and I, I, I would like to do like a, a multi-state road trip when my kids are, are a little bigger, but I feel like there's still a lot of stuff in yeah. that, that we can still explore with yeah. a little less driving. <laughs> and it takes a long time to get out of Texas too. <laughs> it does, it does. It's true. Yeah. And Texas is very affordable. So. It is. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much, Inga. It was a pleasure to yeah. share these tips and look forward to sharing more in the future. Yeah. Thank you. This is a great resource. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Amy, for all you thank do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care. Bye.